Yeah. Right, I'm with uh, Ravenel Chambers here of uh, Be Inspired Films, and it started off with me showing my iPad 2, and now we've got into proper interviewing uh, yeah, yeah. technique here. Um, we were talking about people now getting interested in using video at events, but perhaps not quite savvy enough yet about what that means and how to plan it. What's your tips? Yeah, I think um, one of the key things that I would always say with video is it's almost all in the planning, to some extent. Obviously, it's nice to get stuff on the fly, but if you want to get stuff that you can use, like outputs that you can use at the end that help you achieve what you're trying to achieve, you really got to have a good think about it to make the best use of the time of the people who you're going to potentially be paying to come and, and, and actually um, film and edit, and I I even if they're as volunteers, to help them to kind of feel focused and get some good footage for what you're, what you're trying to be after. So I think planning is so, so important, and a lot of people, as you've said, um, just think, oh, just come along, let's film it and see what happens afterwards kind of thing. And, and I think that, you know, it's a recipe for disaster to some extent. Well, I have heard people say, well, yeah, come along, shoot it, we'll get maybe 50 pieces, <laughs> and that's a really good way of capturing conversations in the event, and then we'll view it all afterwards. Yeah. No? Well, I, I remember uh, back in about 2003, I, I was running mentoring projects in the Midlands, and um, I'd, uh, I, I decided I wanted to capture the impact of these projects by making a video. And although I'd done some video back in like 2000, or sorry, 96 in Africa, it'd been a while, so I just thought, we do so much good stuff, we'll film all of it. And it was the exact same problem. I've, I've learned this, this by, by making the same mistake. Um, we had about 30 hours of footage, and then we sat down to try and make a sense of that and make about a 15-minute video. And my God, it was... It was, let's just say, it was three months of very stressful, you know, and, and, I, and I'm not joking, it took about three months to actually get it to come out to, to, to a sort of a useful piece. So yeah, it, it's, it's not really the way to go about it. And also, better to have one or two or three really sort of focused pieces that actually can lead on, to, as you say, to further conversation, or actually get the uh, person who's watching it to take the kind of action that you'd like them to. Yeah. So you need to know more or less where you want to get to, and then you have to structure some questions. Which Work you backwards people. almost. Yeah. yeah. You almost want to know what are the outputs. And as a, as a production company, to be very honest, we, we actually won't get involved until it's very clear what those outputs are going to be. Because that's where you work backwards from, you know. You need to know that, and, and, and to, be, to be fair, you can't really cost anything unless you know what it, what it actually is going to turn out to be. Um, but the most important thing is, is that helping the client get something that's really effective for what they're trying to achieve. And I think we would work backwards, yeah. Like so, as I mentioned, the people power change event. You you formulate your questions to get the right kind of answers from the people, not the right kind of answers, but the right kind of focus from people, so that it actually is useful to the person watching it. Because the person who's watching it, it's got to be something that they feel, oh, isn't it? You know, it's something that they might want to engage with. You know? And you could then possibly take that conversation on outside the event, online. Yeah, whether it's on Twitter, Facebook, email, whatever. But you, you want, potentially, you don't even really want people to go, oh, their videos are really nice. Yeah. You want them to say what their, the, vi the video should almost be transparent, like my glasses, you know. It should be, uh, it's a medium. The video is a medium, I think, it's a tool. Um, and it can help, if it can help you to achieve what you're trying to achieve, then brilliant. But just in and of itself, on its own, just for the sake of it. It's not really like any tool. You know. So there is a possibility here of using uh, people's interest and enthusiasm for video to help them be more thoughtful about events and planning generally. Definitely. And for example, at an event, as we were just saying, you know, often you have sessions where everyone's inside an event, and then you have where they're all kind of pile out at a very short period of time. So if you do want to capture content throughout the day, you kind of almost need to factor that in before the event starts so that maybe, for example, the speakers that are on stage. Um, Potentially, as they come off stage, somebody brings them straight away to someone who can interview them straight away. Um, because otherwise, when they come out, people mob them and they're, they're going to be busy. When they're in there, they want to be hearing the sessions. So you need to, to plan it so you factor in all, of the, all of the things you need to think about to make sure that you, you uh, nab them, if you like, that when, they're, when they're free. <laughs> so it can be, and I've certainly found this, it can be difficult to try and introduce some video reporting into a conventional um, conference. It has to be... Uh, designed into it, just as uh, with a good uh, conference, you have to design in conversation places. Yeah, yeah and time for people to chat and so on. Um, and yeah, absolutely, 100%. And it's something that you learn by trial and error, maybe. I mean, naturally, with the people we work with, we try and advise them and help them to understand these things so they can be more effective. But you know, you'll learn one way or the other by maybe trying it and it didn't work, or you know what I mean. 
But um, if you can save yourself all that, that trouble and then shortcut it, then why not? And is this something you're getting around into in your training programs? Yeah, we, we, I mean, we're a production company, so we, we create video content for the people with social purpose projects and organizations. But about 18 months ago, we started a, a thing called How to Create Your Own Videos course. Um, and uh, it's a one-day course. It's very hands-on, very, very much learning by doing. And yeah, it's, it's the, the four things we cover are planning, filming, editing, and sharing. Um, and it, the idea is you go away actually able to, because you've done it on the day. Um, learn, you know, all, you have the skills for each and every bit of the building blocks you need to actually turn out good content. But most importantly, regularly. So you go away so you can do it again and again. Um, so I think it's something, as you say, as people get more interested in video, the course is getting more and more popular because people want to do it, but they want to do it to a, not necessarily slick by any means, but to a standard where you know people will watch it and they think oh, it's, it becomes that medium. It, it, they don't, like like Anthony, who's uh, one of our trainers, he often says, no one will ever come up to you and say the sound on that was really good, but as soon as it's not good, they'll just switch off. There's certain things that have to be there for it to be watchable, you know, so things like that. Great, thanks. I'll go and have to go and get myself a decent big floppy mic. Yeah. <laughs> thanks a lot, David. Good to chat to you. Wave goodbye. Bye. <laughs>